Hallelujah. This morning, I want to speak about a picture that Paul speaks about in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. And this is still on the theme on uh, partnership. Paul uses a picture in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this picture really for me, it is the best picture that Paul could have used to speak about the working together in a partnership. So if we can uh, open our Bibles in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it has many members, and members of the body, we talk about eyes, we talk about ears, we talk about hands, we've got feet, uh, you've got many cells in the body, inside the cell, the body there's organs, and you can speak about the different organs inside the body. And, and, and I must say I'm not a biologist, so don't think I will even give you a lesson on biology or the human anatomy. But Paul says, even though that body has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are still one body. So Paul is saying that even though in that body, as you can see on the screen, it has many members, it has hands, feet, toes, ears, eyes, hair, even though they are many, they make the one body. So you cannot see a member of the body and think you have a body. You only say it's a body because it is complete with all its members. Can you say amen, somebody? It is only complete when it has all its members. And many a times we say that when it does not have all the members, we say it's a what? It's a disabled body. Amen. Meaning that there is some function that it cannot do. There are some functions that it cannot be able to complete because it has a disability. Meaning that there are certain things in the body that are not in the body. Amen. Can you say amen somebody? So the only times we call it a body is because it has all its members. That's why it's a body. Without some of its members, we may call it something else. But for as long as it is complete, we call it a body. So Paul says, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. 13, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. By one spirit we are all baptized into one body. So Paul now is saying when it comes to us as Christians and children of God, because we are Christians, the Spirit of God baptizes us into one body, meaning that as many members, as different as we are, we belong into a body. Amen. And the body is only complete when all the members are in the body. Amen. Hallelujah. So if one is not in the body, baptized into the body, it means that the body is not what? Is not complete. Now, now I like what he says in verse 13. He continues and says, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Now, Paul says, you know, because he's speaking to this church in Corinth, and this church is made up of many people. And many of them are Greeks, meaning that they are not Jews. They, they have not been born out of the, they don't have the same physical inheritance as any other Jew. But we know that when you are baptized into the Spirit, the Bible says that we are also born of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham because the Spirit makes us sons of God. Hallelujah. Now, now, but he says, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free. And basically what Paul is saying is, when it comes to this body of Christ, it is not class that decides who is in the body and who is not. Amen? 
It is not whether you are rich or poor. Uh, it, it, this body is not only for the rich. It is also for the poor. It's not only for the free. It's also for the slaves. It's not only for the Jew, but it's also for what? For the Gentiles. Amen. Now, now I can claim, uh, I think I told you that I'm a black Jew, so I can claim that I have, I have a physical inheritance. I can claim. But this is not about any physical inheritance. It's about our spiritual inheritance. Hallelujah. Whether black or white, whether you're colored, whether you're green, whether you're yellow, you have the right to partake in this boat. Can you say amen, somebody? For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. You know, so Paul is it's reiterating this thing, that the body is not one member, but it is many members. The body is not about one, it's about many becoming one. Now, now and, and, and by the way, I think I told you that, you know, Paul always understood the context, also understood the people that he talks to. So, so you will see here that he starts making an argument. He says, if the food, verse 15, if the food should say, because I am not a hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Now, if you look at that picture, there's the food right at the bottom of that picture. And if that food was to say that I am not a hand, and you can see the hand, right? I'm not a hand. Therefore, I'm not of this body. Is that food really correct? You know, so if any member of the body, because it is right at the periphery, at the bottom of the body, was to say, I am not the hand or I'm not the eye, is it really correct if it was to say that? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And of course, the answer is no. It is part of that body. Now, if the whole body, if the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Now, now Paul makes a statement, you know, just look at that body. If that whole body was just an eye, where would the body be? Basically, it will just be a ball rolling, not being able to see, because it will just be round, without the brain that can make it see, you know? And, and, and even if it was to see, how would it move? How would it... Amen. Paul wants us to use some imagination. And the truth is, it will not be a complete body. The truth is it will not be functional. It will have certain handicaps. And, and verse 18, Paul says, you know what? God has put each and every member of that body as he pleased. Because when he did that, there was a function that each and every member of the body had to fulfill for the body to be complete, for the body to be able to be functional. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Just imagine the eye saying, I have no need of the hand. And imagine when the eye is uh, tearing. Eh? What happens? The hand is the one that wipes it. Ne? So just imagine when the hand is not part of that body. How will that eye... You know, if it has a bit of dust, if, if it goes inside it, how would it really help itself? Maybe it can, eh? I don't think so. Hallelujah. Now again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And I like this statement. You know, Paul says that if you look at the body, there are certain members that seem to be weaker. 
He does not say they are weak. He says they seem to be weaker. Because they don't have strength, they can't carry things. Yet they are very important in the body. Now, if you think about an E and, and, and what it does, you know, sometimes people think, it's, it, you know, I can do without it. But let me tell you that biology tells me that the reason you walk straight like I am right now is because of the ear. Without it, you lose balance. You know, what, what is the use of the body that does not have balance, that cannot stand up straight, that, that will define things in this hall as something else because it's looking at them upside down or sideways? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, ju ju just imagine what that means. It means that people will not have knowledge. It means that people will not be able to know things because they will know them as if they are when they are not. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on this we bestow greater honor. You know, if you look at that body on the screen, I didn't want to be gory and show you all the internal organs because some of you might even faint, you know, when you begin to see how messed up you are inside. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But the truth is, inside that body, there are certain members that are not honorable. There are certain members in the body that when, when you think about them, you don't even know they exist. You don't even know they are there. But their job is so great. You know, I, I mean, you, you think about the brain. If you look at the brain, it's just a lump of what? A lump of stuff, of matter. It's a lump. It does not even have shape. The only reason it has shape is because of your, of your head. You put it there without the head, it's just a lump of stuff. But that lump of stuff, as dishonorable as it looks, it has so much honor because everything that functions in the body gets controlled by that lump of stuff. Can you say amen, somebody? So Paul says there are members of the body that are not honorable, we, but they are the ones we must bestow great honor. You know, many a times in a church environment like this, there are people who hold this church together. You don't see them on the stage. Amen? They don't get to talk to people. They only talk to God, interceding for everything that happens in the church. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't even know them by name because we don't know the work that they are doing. And who do we give honor? You know, the guys who wear suits and come to the front. They are the ones we honor. We honor. But those members of the body that are not honorable, they are the ones that keeps everything in check. They are the ones that keeps everything together. Can you say amen, somebody? I'm talking about intercessors. You never see them. Even when they come to church, you don't even hear them because they spend their time outside church, praying for church. Those are the members, they are not honorable, but we bestow greater honor unto them because we know that they've got a greater function. You look at that body, there's, there's uh, nerves and there's uh, veins in the body. All those things, we don't see them, but they are doing a greater job for me to be speaking to you right now. Moving oxygen from the bottom to the top. Making sure that every cell in my body is functional, it's healthy. Do we see? No. Do we know? Some of us don't because we have not done biology. Amen? Even if people were to tell us we don't believe them. Can you say amen, somebody? And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. The parts that I said, I, I, I didn't even want to show you because they're unpresentable. If I show you all the internal organs of a body, you know, you can't like them. You don't even want to see them. You might even be scared of yourself just by sitting and imagining what's inside and what's happening. 
but they have greater modesty. They don't show themselves, but they are doing a great job. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to those parts which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Hallelujah. Verse 26, and if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Hallelujah. So Paul starts saying that the truth is when one of the members of this body suffers, what do we say? We say I'm sick, ne? We don't say my eye is sick. Amen? Uh, we say I'm sick. Me, whole me is sick because of my eye. Even because of that toothache, you say, you know, I'm terribly in pain. You don't say my tooth is in pain. Let me take it out and then all the pain will be gone. Because when you take it out, something out of your body goes out and the whole body gets into so much pain. Can you say amen, somebody? So it is important to understand that every one of the members is important for the body to be whole, for the body to be healthy. If one suffers, everyone else suffers. Hallelujah. Of course, doctors in their wisdom, when um, you've got gangrene or something, what do they do? They cut a piece off. And they say, we are trying to save the rest of the body. Amen. But even in that situation, they create a disability. You begin to find that the piece that has been taken off had a, even a greater function. You begin to realize that you start having all sorts of other issues because of a small piece that has been taken out. Hallelujah. But... The reason why they take that piece out is because the whole body is suffering. Amen. Can you say amen, somebody? Now, you are the body of Christ and members individually. And Paul is saying that we are the body of Christ, but we are members individually. But each one of us is key and integral part of the body. And if one suffers, so does the whole body suffer. And if one rejoices, the whole body rejoices. Can you say amen, somebody? If we read in the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. That is Christ. Christ is the head of this body. Amen. Now, if you think about the head in the body, that's where all the intelligence sits. That's where all the functionality, even the things that do not think, they only work because of the functionality that is in the head. Because the brain has two parts. It has a part that controls motor movements and a part that controls all the unconscious things that happens in the body. For example, the heart pumping blood is controlled by the brain. Without the brain, the heart will stop. The blood flow that you see in that picture will do what? Will stop. And without the flow of blood, then there is no life. Can you say amen, somebody? How do they check that someone is gone? They check their what? They are? Pulse, whether the heart is still pumping blood in their body. Because for as long as the blood is being pumped, there is a, there's hope. Amen. Can you say amen, somebody? Colossians 2, 19. They've lost connection with the head from whom the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews 
grows as God causes it to grow. Now, without the head, if you lose connection with the head, the, the, the body cannot grow. The body cannot have life. Hallelujah. The body grows because it is connected to the, to the head. Because as the head coordinates every other part and organ of the body, then the body is able to grow. The body can be stronger. But only when it is connected to the head, which is Christ, because he is the head of this body. Can you say amen, somebody? So every member now has function because of the head. Because a hand without the head is just a what? A piece of meat. Some bones with some flesh. Useless. No function. Because it cannot wave. It cannot make a fist. It cannot do anything. But because the head is there, it's able to give this hand some function. It begins to be useful. It begins to do things that will m benefit the whole body. It can take food and, you know. But without the head, it can take food and throw it. It can't go into the mouth. Can't feed the body. Can you say amen, somebody? Hallelujah. And the, I chose this picture because this picture now tells me that even though the head is there, there is flow that keeps every member of this body together. The flow of the blood that is flowing in that body. And I can tell you that for us as the body of Christ, it is the spirit of God that keeps every member together, that keeps us in check. The only reason the body is functional and it is one is because of the blood that flows through it. Amen. And as the body of Christ, the spirit of God, it is the one that flows through each member, making them useful for the purpose that God has put them in the church for. Amen. And like Jesus says, if you are part of the vine and you are useless, what happens? You get cut off. If, if, if you, are, you are a cancerous cell in a body, what happens? We cut you off. Because you are infiltrating the whole body. Causing the whole body not to be functional. Causing unnecessary pain. Hallelujah. But the Spirit of God is the one that weaves us together in this body of Christ, where Christ is the head. It is the Spirit that gives life to everyone. It is the Spirit that commands everyone to partake and do what they are supposed to do in this partnership. Not here to sit and watch. Not here to sit and be a spectator. How can you be a spectator in the body? And yes, maybe another member looks at you and say, no, but you know, you are just a lump of, uh, of, of, of meat. You don't have any usefulness. No, you do have. If you are in the body, you have a function. And when you fulfill your function, the whole body will be healthy. Can you say amen, somebody? But you can't come and just sit it out. You must come and take part. Hallelujah. Can you say amen, somebody? Can you say amen, somebody? Hallelujah. So Paul uses this picture because he saw that in the church of Corinth, some people were getting more honor than others. Some people thought they are, and others are not. And I'm here to say to you that in this church, as we are building this partnership, every one of you has a role to play. Because God did not bring you here just to be. He brought you here because there is a purpose. Hallelujah. 
I'm reminded of a story of uh, a CEO who was walking around in his company, and as he was walking around, he met a janitor. And he said, what is your job here? And the answer was, I am producing Apple computers. Hallelujah. Because he realized that he's working in a company that produces Apple computers, even though he's a janitor cleaning up for others or after others, he knows he's there because without him, even the best of minds cannot function. Amen. Maybe that's a less honorable job. But I can tell you in your own house, you do that job because you realize we cannot function without someone cleaning the dishes. We cannot function without someone going and cleaning that place where we only see it when we have to. Amen. Hallelujah. And you do that so that there could be functioning in the house. Can you say amen, somebody? And yes, maybe you might say to me, now nah, with me, I've got a helper who does that, those things for me. Okay, let me tell you, the day the helper is not well, you don't have a choice. You've got to have to do it. Because it has to be done. And I'm saying to you that we are all here because God wants us to take part. We've been called unto this church as members who need to take part in building this body. And when Christ commands, our job is to do and obey. When Christ says move, your job is to move. When he says jump, your job is to say how high. Can you say amen somebody? So I want to challenge you that as we embark in this partnership, building, living with hope, giving people hope, that even those who come without hope, when they've received hope, they will also be part of giving others hope because they will have a testimony and say, I came to this place. I did not think I am worthy to live, but I found hope. And I'm here to say to you, so can you. Hallelujah. Can you say amen, somebody? Because that is the desire of our Lord Jesus Christ, the head of this body, the head of this church. It's that each and every member can find their honor. Even those that are not honorable, that we can bestow honor unto them. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes sitting down where you are. Maybe you can just reflect briefly upon your role. And maybe today you still have not discovered what you are here for. Or maybe you think there is no space. All vacancies are closed. But let me tell you, I know that God has called you for a purpose. I know that God has brought you into this assembly to do something. Because he gives different gifts to others for different things. And I want you to take some time and meditate upon this word as a member of this body. So that as I continue with this message, you can be able to find yourself and discover yourself. But I want to pray with you this morning that the Spirit of God may open your mind and open your heart. That as the Spirit is weaving everyone, it's flowing in this house, that you can be a member, that it will flow through, that it can be able to connect you to others. That you can find yourself in this body and your role. Lord, in the name of Christ Jesus, your spirit, 
you can make each and every one of us to do their part. Even those that sometimes we think are insignificant. That God Almighty, as they do their part, those that are significant can be able to do and fulfill their part. I pray this in the name of Jesus, that you will raise intercessors in this house, that you will raise ministers in this house, that you will raise helpers in this house, that you will raise administrators in this house, in the name of Jesus, that every one of them will partake and you will receive all the glory. As the body stands, formidable, recognizable because of its head. That is our Lord Christ Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work that you're continuing to do in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen.